Hello, my name's Nathan Cleary, and I'm here today with Consoldini.com to talk to you about the Ba-bam. Roland TB3. So this is part of the Aira Air- range, or have you pronounced it, A-I-R-A range, and um, it's a little bit old now. It's getting on compared to some of the new uh, hardware emulations that have been coming out, but uh, I've had this as a staple in my studio for, uh, well, ever since it came out, and uh, I love it. I think it's a great sequencer, it has some good sounds on it, and uh, I used it actually quite a lot to sequence other pieces of hardware. Um, because I find as a musician it's quite easy to transpose the patterns on here um, in a very easy and intuitive way which is a big plus for me but we'll get into that a little bit later when I show you some of the front panel uh, all of the features and everything in a close-up shot in a second so I'll also be doing a quick music demo today flicking through some of the patches and the sounds built into this uh, on its own and with my uh, electron machine drum over there to give you an idea of how um, a drum machine can work with this unit uh, to create some really cool rhythms and uh, variation. So before we start today, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button and the bell button for more notifications from us. And uh, obviously go and check out consoldini.com for more kind of gear reviews like this and uh, more fun related music stuff. So um, yeah. So without further ado, let's jump over to a close camera angle and have a look at the front panel, uh, some of the features and uh, what this can do before taking it for a spin with a audio demo. So here we go. Okay, so here we are with the front panel of the Roland TB3. Let's run through everything really, really quickly so we can get down to uh, some of the music making and uh, sounds. So let's start over here. So we have a volume pot over here, and then we have our cutoff, and then we have our resonance, followed by the accent and the effect. So the effect changes depending on the patch that you've selected that you can get to by um, clicking on envelope mod, X play or keyboard and you can see up here displayed here we are on patch a number one um, and we've got a bank of a about how many have we got here about 26 and then a bank of b patches uh, quite a few there as you can see we've got in b 52 51 52 uh, c in the c bank we've got around 40 and then we've got a d bank over here as well so you've got plenty to uh, play with there. Everything's in the manual if you want to check out what each patch is. Obviously that's beyond the scope of this um, video today. And we've got some user banks here as well. So uh, I generally stick on the A bank because this is the one that they've modelled the most after the original hardware unit. So I actually normally stick on one or around here, but sometimes it's fun to change to some of their newest, newer patches that they've created for this unit. Um, yeah, just have a play around with that. So moving down to the buttons down here, we have a keyboard. So obviously you have your keyboard here you've got we've got it set up with a C scale and you can flick between octaves here so this is down one octave up one octave so now neither button is lit so we're at kind of middle C sort of thing and then up one and this when this blinks will be up two octaves and then up three when it blinks a bit faster so let's go back down to middle so there we go so we're in middle X play you can move your finger and you can kind of break up whatever pattern you're playing by um, moving your finger across. So we'll, we'll have a demonstration of this later. We've got the envelope button here which they've m actually moved from the original unit. It used to be a knob up here but now they've moved it down to this touchpad which I think is not that great. I would have preferred to have a knob because especially when you're playing with say the scatter later we've got scatter button here so you can create some glitch effects uh, if you've got your finger on this you you can't you can't be on the envelope screen at the same time so yeah that's a bit of a minus for um for playability there i wish they had a knob so you could hold the scatter while moving the envelope but um you know that's one of the small things about this we've got our um pattern select over here so we've got a bunch of uh pattern selects you can save all your patterns in here and then we can move over to step record. So how this works is you can see I've got the sequencer moving along here. And then one, two, three, we'll move along to each step and we'll input a button um, on our keyboard here. And as soon as we input that, it will move along to the next step, input that along to the next step. We've got a clear here or a rest. We can add a button and then go back, add a slide and an accent by just clicking these buttons here, well, pressing these buttons, sorry here. Um, so it's all very, uh, if you're a musician, this is a lot more, uh, mu I would say, musician friendly 
than the uh, than the original unit was. Uh, so I think that it, mm, if you're coming at this from a musician and you want that Roland uh, 303 sound, this is definitely uh, a cool unit to check out. Um, and just because it's a little dated, that doesn't mean it's not worth checking out. So yeah, bear that in mind. So then we've got tempo over here. We've got tempo up the top. Uh, and then we've got real-time record. I don't use that this much because I prefer to be more precise if you're sequencing. But you can, you can, you know, have a sequence playing and say, oh, I want um, a note to go in here. You can just tap it in time with uh, your pattern and it will save it in with the pattern. Um, like I said, it's a bit inaccurate and you're not sure if it's going to really land on the... Uh, on the beat or the rhythm you want it to, so I prefer to stick in step record mode. But it's again, it's something to just play around with. Um, so also another thing we've got is if we go onto our pattern select, a very cool feature of this is we can pick one pattern by pressing just obviously once, or we can chain patterns like this. So it will play this one and this one, then back to this one. And we can do that for five patterns, three patterns, as many patterns as you like. We can play them all back to back. So that makes this kind of a, a really cool way to play live. As you can see up here as well, it's flicking through the consecutive patterns. Um, as far as I know, you there is no way to actually do two like this. You have to do them consecutively, which is a bit annoying because it teases you as you can do this. But you can't say pick this one and another one over here, if you see what I mean. Um, Yes, that's a shame. That would have been a nice functionality to have. And one of my favourite things about this, and again, uh, sticking with the, the reason why I like this unit and I've kept this unit and use it so much, is because as a musician primarily, uh, or coming from a musical background, it just makes a lot of sense to create these patterns on here. And you can transpose just by holding the keyboard button over here. And, you know, say I've got something in C minor, and I've got that chugging away in C minor. I can record that into my DAW and mangle it or whatever I like, or jam on that. And then uh, we can hold the button, and uh, there we go. We're in E flat minor, or well, this is saying D sharp, but yeah, um, you can hold the keyboard button and transpose it. So G, F, uh, B flat, A sharp. So this is a really, really cool way, and obviously we've got the octave as well, so you can even do it, you know, to different keys and different octaves. So that's a really quick way to transpose lots of your patterns very quickly and easily and musically, which I think is a real, real winner for this, uh, for this unit. And another cool thing about this is we've got also at the back here, uh, we have USB. Um, so we have USB in and out. So I actually have this going into my MIDI, um, my MIDI Express, my Motu, Motu MIDI Express, and uh, I actually use this to control lots of software synths and other hardware synths uh, from the USB. Uh, so sometimes I don't even use the sounds on board on this. I just love the way the sequencer is and how easy it is to transpose. And um, yeah, I just think it's a great unit to have in your studio if you really want that kind of electronic 303 sequencer. And the sound is also built in. So um, yeah. So without further ado, let's listen to some of the sounds of the uh, TB3. First of all, we'll have a, a listen to it on its own, and then I'll, I'll bring in a machine drum with like some simple beats and stuff so you can still hear the TB3. Um, yeah, so here we go. Oh, <laughs> 
So thank you very much for watching again today and uh, head down and hit the bell button and subscribe once again. Uh, check out consoldini.com and I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.